Hello, everyone. You know, it occurred to me this week that um, VBG, Vine and Branches Group, could also stand for very boisterous group. I, I don't know how loud you guys are. I don't know how much, uh, how energetic you've been getting into this study, but I do hope that you're enjoying yourselves. I hope that the discussion is lively. Um, and I hope that what you're finding already is that the Lord is taking his word and bringing it to a deeper level in your heart. It, it's easy for us as Christians to kind of uh, uh, allow it to come in here. Uh, we spend a few minutes with it on Sunday morning and then we kind of step out in, into the world and sort of leaves the other side of our heads. And what you've done by committing to your very boisterous group, your VBG, is you've said, God, I, I really want to take your word deeper into my heart. I want to learn to apply it. I want to be connected, not just to hear that I'm connected. That's what you're doing. So well done. And I pray that this week, the third group session is a blessed one. And here we are. It's love's steep price. As you heard in the message from Sunday, love is costly. And as we're in the second portion of the passage, so the first portion of the passage from John 15 has to do with the joy that God has for us. The second portion of the passage has to do with the command that God in Christ issues to us. That we should love as he loves. And this is his command. In fact, this is his one command. It's not to say that there aren't other commands in Scripture. There are lots of other commands in Scripture. And as you know from Jesus' teaching to his disciples, there are really only two that all the others boil down to. Number one, love God. Number two, love others. So as we're loving God, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my command. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I, I love you. You're God in the flesh. I, lo I love God. And Jesus says, all right, well, if you love me, keep my command. And my can command is this, love each other. Oh, my goodness. So at the end of the day, my love for God, whether it is love or isn't love, can be seen is evidenced by how well I love others. Everything hinges for Jesus on this one command. If you love me, he says, then you will love each other. And oh, by the way, love has a steep price tag. Look at Jesus. If love is costly, then it's going to cost me something to love. It's not hard to figure this out, is it? Uh, I don't know what to relationship you might think of first. Maybe it's a family relationship. Maybe it's a work relationship. Maybe it's a relationship inside the church where God is calling you to pay love's cost, to step into sacrifice for the good of another. This is his command. Love each other as I have loved you. And if we take his command seriously, then we know that love requires us to give something up for the good of the other. Otherwise, it's not love. Otherwise, what we're really doing is we're loving ourselves. Jesus doesn't want us to not love ourselves. He just doesn't want us to love ourselves first. He's got that job covered. He's loving me so that I can love you. I don't have to worry that I'll go without love because God is love and I'm grafted onto the vine. I've got everything I need from Jesus for what my soul needs, for what's good for me. Stepping into that reality then means, ah, I also have enough then to sacrifice for you. This is what Jesus has called us to do. And, and let's, let's be real. He has said in his word, um, in his word to his disciples, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? So it's easy to call Jesus Lord. 
harder to let him be Lord. It's easy to say God is love. Harder to say I have all the love I need to be able to love you sacrificially. What I want to invite you to do is I want you to think about the person or persons in your life. And this is going to be somebody close to you. It's not going to, you're not going to have to go uh, skipping with your eyes out to the fringes of your life. It's going to be somebody that's close to you. Maybe even who lives in your home with you. That God wants you to pay a steeper price. To make a bigger sacrifice. And when you think about it that way, is this a person that God says, you're robbing of the love that I have for this person by withholding it from him or her? This is heavy. And yes, Jesus' teaching demands so much from us. But let's remember, he's not asked us to pay any price that he himself has not already paid for us. Friends, brothers, sisters, you have everything you need for what your soul requires. You have everything you need. You have enough from God to step into a deeper, more sacrificial, more costly love for the people in your life. Now, as you look at your life and you say, well, gee, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Remember that it is through the pruning as God gets his hands on you that you become more fruitful. And the fruit that he's talking about is joy and is love. So the question might be that you can ask yourself, what loving thing can I do to bring joy to this person in my life? I don't have to agree with them. I don't have to say that they do everything right. I don't have to say, oh, uh, uh, they've never done anything to hurt me. I can simply ask the question, what one thing could I do, let's say this week, that I know would bring joy to this person's life? Because you see, love and joy are connected. To love more is to bring more joy. And not just for you, but for the people in your life. Well, you're going to unpack this in your group tonight. And if it feels scary, feels a little bit nerve-wracking, feels a little bit like, well, Pastor, you're really pushing on me, you're really put, uh, stepping on my toes, all right, all right. The Holy Spirit is with you to comfort you, to guide you, to give you the insight. And, oh, by the way, he's also with the members of your group. So as you're stepping into this study, maybe some thoughts uh, you'd be willing to share with your group around this difficult, challenging teaching. Work it out in your group. And remember that later on in our series, we'll be listening for Tales from the Vine, listening for stories of how God has been using, whether it's your group, whether it's the teaching, uh, whether it's the silly videos that you guys have to watch at the beginning of each group lesson to help uh, you apply these teachings and then to look for the joy, to look for the fruit that he's going to grow in your life. I pray God's best for all of you, his blessings for all of you, and I'll see you next time. God bless.